listening to the They May All Be One podcast with new episodes every Tuesday, helping you stand firm in the faith and share the gospel with love. And now, here are your hosts, Shane and Holly Sands. Well, hello, podcast friends. Happy and merry. Yes. <laughs> Five it's that holiday season. Rings. Well, not quite Christmas, dear. No, but, <laughs> but I, there's no Thanksgiving songs, are there? Are there any Thanksgiving I don't think songs? so. Um, yeah, I'm missing it. I don't know. Somebody needs to come up with one. I yeah, we should. Somebody needs to come up with some fall music. Okay, I know it's November when you're listening to this, but it's still fall in my heart. I yes. need a fall song. In fact, when you when you're listening to this, it will be I think the first Tuesday after Thanksgiving. After or before? After, I believe. Not sure. Because it's the last Thursday and this will be November 29th, I believe. Check your calendar there. Yeah. Let's see here. It will be the 29th. You're right. After Thanksgiving, after we are so stuffed, we all we can do is sleep. <laughs> Gobble till you wobble type of thing. So excited, though. We'll have uh, Caitlin and her husband, Roman, coming to stay with us for a while, which will be so good to see them again. Yep. Hubba and Bubba, as yes. you like to affectionately call them. Correct. Um, so we were thinking about, you know, this time of year and, uh, the holiday season, the culture in America, we're talking about Thanksgiving, all the things, the traditions of family and, and being together. And, man, it, it's just amazing. So, uh, yeah, as you know, we record several weeks in advance so that we can always try to stay ahead and do the programs and get them taken care of, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So when you do hear this, you're actually hearing this on the Tuesday after Thanksgiving, they will have just left, what, two days ago? Correct. So you would be like, <laughs> you know, if you're thinking about it, you'll be all sad. Hubba and Bubba are gone. <laughs> and, you know, the cool thing about um, this time of year, this culture, this, this contemplation upon family, Thanksgiving, is really what this whole program is about. I mean, today we celebrate, today is the end of season two. I think this is seven months, seven, eight months, something like that. I forget. It's It's been, we had, what, 15 episodes in the first season, 17 in this season? Yep. And I mean, if you think about that's weekly, a couple of them we put together. So that's, I mean, four into 32 is eight. So it's been about seven months, seven to eight months of being on top, going, go, 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 go. And that I can't. That is the theme of our lives. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go, go, go. And, and today, what's really neat, and I'm not trying to like belabor it, is that we end season two with perhaps, in my mind, even more than last week. But because of last week, we can talk about this week and end on this note. Um, because our topic today is a result of everything. Everything that we've gone through, everything we talked about, but especially last week, our topic this week is on our final destination. And so I want to read this section of scripture. And then, Holly, I, I gave you a couple of verses. If you'll read those, and then we'll come back. So if you go to Second Thessalonians and we look in chapter 1, I'm going to read this portion starting in verse 4. It goes, Therefore we ourselves speak proudly of you among the churches of God for your perseverance and faith in the midst of all your persecutions, and afflictions which you endure. This is plain indication of God's righteous judgment so that you will be considered worthy of the kingdom of God for which indeed you are suffering. That is 
the key part. This is plain indication of God's righteous judgment so that you will be considered worthy of the kingdom of God for for which indeed you are suffering. Can you read the, oh, and I should go on, I'm sorry. And it says, and to give relief to you who are afflicted and to us as well when the Lord Jesus will be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels and flaming fire, dealing out retribution to those who do not know God and to those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 10 it says, when he comes to be glorified in his saints on that day and to be marveled at among all, all who have believed. And what are the two verses? It's Hebrews, um, what was it? Chapter 9. I didn't write down the chapter. <laughs> chapter 9, verses 27 and 28 says, And just as it has, excuse me, and just as it is destined for people to die once, and after this comes judgment, so Christ also, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time for salvation without reference to sin to those who eagerly await him. Amen. Amen. We here at United in Christ Jesus are a faith-based ministry dependent on those who the Lord puts in their hearts to come alongside of us. Whether it's a one-time or a monthly contribution, we praise God and thank you for your kindness and grace toward us. If you'd like to help support this podcast ministry, please go to thatthemayallbeone.org and click on the donate page. You can give through PayPal or you can mail your donation to our P.O. box that's listed on the website. We rejoice that the fruit the Lord produces in and through this ministry will be credited to your account as you help support the avenues of this outreach. May God richly bless you. Amen. And we are richly blessed by you. Yes, we are. First and foremost, by your prayers of intercession and thanksgiving. Uh, We are overjoyed that God has granted for the church to support one another so wonderfully and richly through the Spirit by prayer and intercession. So we just can't thank you guys enough for being a part of that. The other part is that we do thank God for those of you who God has put upon their hearts to come alongside and support this ministry. Uh, The podcast is just one aspect of it, and it reaches far and wide, and it reaches different people in different places all the time. So I ask you that as the end of this year comes to be, that you might consider making a end-of-the-year contribution to the ministry. Uh, if you are looking to help support a gospel-focused, uh, uh, church-focused ministry that seeks to build up brothers and sisters in Christ and reach the lost with the gospel, please prayerfully consider making a contribution uh, to this ministry and or becoming a partner with us and contributing monthly as we try to reach the lost with the gospel and build the church up in holiness and righteousness and justice and equity in every good course. So thank you all. Thank you. So we ended with what might seem to be a little different scripture verses because we're, we're talking about the second coming of Christ and his coming is not in reference to sin to those who eagerly await him. For those of us who are suffering uh, in Christ right now, that we are going to see him and he's going to be marveled at. We're going to be amazed and astonished. So what does that have to do about our final destination? Well, in Revelation chapter 21, you, you hear this, and I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is among men, and he will dwell among them, and they, will, they shall be his people, and God himself will be among them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will no longer be any death. There will no longer be any mourning or crying or pain. The first things have passed away. And he who sits on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. And he said, Write, for these words are faithful and true. Then he said to me, 
it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give to the one who thirsts from the spring of of the water of life without cost. He who overcomes will inherit these things, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. I will be his God, and he will be my son. Our final destination is to be in the presence of God and his glory. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, to see the Father, to look upon the Son as he is and where he is. Our home is not this earth. How often I think we go through our day not thinking about that we are aliens and strangers. We went through the book of First Peter, and remember uh, the very first part of First Peter says to those who are scattered about as, you know, aliens, you know, the, uh, those in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. This isn't our home. Our home is right there. That when Christ returns, those who are in dead in Christ are going to be raised first, and then those who remain are going to be caught up with him. And then we will always be with him, and we will see him as he is. We will be with him, and there is no hindrance to be in unity and in perfect harmony, in love, in joy. I think, how does it say in uh, Corinthians, no mind has seen or conceived, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived, of the things that God has prepared for those who love him? I think that's correct. Yeah, neither has it entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for those who love him. And it says that we've been given the Spirit so that we might know the things freely given to us. But think about that. We have have the Spirit of God. We have God to contemplate these things. But it it's still, it, it's, it's beyond comprehension. Paul said that he saw things that human words just weren't allowed to. I mean, it just couldn't. Our language in any language of this world cannot encapsulate or even describe what God has prepared for those who love him. And so how often in Scripture we are told to be focused heavenly minded thinking about that like last week we talked about our identity last week we spent a lot of uh, we focused our time on our identity in christ and our identity is christ and now we're talking about if you remember when we went through first peter that we're being built up as a spiritual house. All of us are stones, living stones, being built up as a spiritual house to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Here we are. We're talking about being in unison, in harmony with God to enjoy God and have nothing no impediment, no dross, no dirt, no darkness, no stain of anything closely, even remotely thinking in the terms of sin, only purity and love. How do you even begin to go beyond describing? I mean, how do you do it? And I mean, you think about the whole universe and you think about all that's been created, and you hear when the Lord Jesus says, enter into, t- come into, t- become, come into the kingdom which has been prepared for you by my Father from the, before the foundation of the world for you. Hold on, it was created f- for Christ. And now we're finding out that we're part, we are the marriage supper of the Lamb, we are the body of Christ. We are one with Christ. We are one with the Father. And our heaven is Jesus. What is what is heaven all about? I mean, you, you think about this. Why are we traveling this road that is narrow? Why are we striving to enter through this narrow gate? Why are we putting off the temporary pleasures of this world that we might embrace the shame of Christ take upon ourselves 
his shame and consider it of more value than all the glories of this world. You know, in, in the world today we live at, you hear about immediate gratification and delayed gratification. And that's what sin is, is it's immediate gratification. It's temporary. But it does not last, and it truly doesn't satisfy. Delayed gratification is like you, you spend a lot of your time doing without stuff so that you can obtain something better later on. And for us, we get Christ. The pearl of great price. Amen. We, we get to be with him. I mean, that's he is our heaven. He is the kingdom. He is. We look through his earthly ministry and how me, how often did people not care about anything except Jesus? Even those who had been healed, they, they were healed, but immediately their whole being was about just being with Jesus. The demonic, the one whom the, the legion went out of, he just begged to be with Christ. He, he wanted to leave everything behind and just be with Jesus. And Mary sitting at his feet. Yep. I mean, you, you, you think about, especially with Mary, and what did Jesus say? She, she has chosen the good part, which will not be taken away from her. Everything that we have, our identity is Christ because he is our heaven. So often you hear people talk about heaven as being a place, you know, of of streets of gold and they get to be with family and friends and meet back up with them and yet heaven is about the consummation and fulfillment of being with our lord jesus upon seeing the father upon the throne and the lord jesus and worship have is, has it ever dawned on you and i know we talked about this a little bit that angels can't even comprehend. I mean, they don't even have this relationship with God. And, and and think about that. The angels who are stronger in might, they are in heaven in the presence of God, and yet they are not, they don't have the relationship with God that we do. That just kind of takes my breath away. We actually... It tells us that we judge that we'll judge angels later on, but that's that's really not. I, I'm not even concerned with that. That we actually have forgiveness of sins, something that angels do not have. That we are told that just as that they may all be one, as the Father and the Son are, so too may we be with them. There is a unity and a relational unity a a relationship so pure that it's compared to the father and the son i i I just can't get that is why we travel this road that is narrow why few stay on it why few go through the gate because god has revealed to us his son the son has revealed the father and nothing on this earth compares, even remotely comes close to the joy and the purity, the love that we have for all time. If time is actually even in existence at that point, it'll just be another means to worship because it's just like more opportunity. But I don't know if time will actually have the same type of meaning just because I think it just get lost in the presence of God. Will there be family and friends there? I hope so. I hope that there's going to be everyone that you would like to meet up with. I hope that there are people that you have been led to the Lord or been built up by the Lord in your families. I hope that we see our friends, and I hope all of these these family members are there. But if they are... Will it not be us pointing and saying, look upon him? Will it not be more of an opportunity for us to look upon and just lose our breath and just get lost in the beauty of Christ? What excites me about that, though, and seeing relatives that have passed that were born again is 
thinking back to when you were speaking with them about the Lord and looking forward to that future hope Mm. and then being able to actually be there in heaven with them and go, remember when we were talking about this? Now we're here. Now we get to worship him forever together. Amen. I mean, that's what excites me. Hallelujah. And uh, both at the same time go, and it goes so far beyond. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, and and to me, golly, the pinnacle of all our doctrine, everything that we've done for for two seasons really comes down to this. God is making all things new. And for those who love him, who eagerly await him, he is not, it's not in reference to sin or punishment. It is to reward and being in his presence. Amen. I, I was blessed to see both my grandparents pass away. Hmm. And I say that because of how they passed away both of them, without a doubt, when they were passing over, saw the Lord. It was evident in their eyes, on their face. My grandmother smiled. She looked up. She took a breath. She was gone. My grandfather, he was incapacitated. He couldn't move, and suddenly he sat up. His eyes got so bright. He took a deep breath, and he was gone. And I knew, I knew they saw the Lord. Amen. And that was such a blessing. You know, what does it say that um, God delights in the death of his saints? I mean, it's a beautiful thing to him. He's welcoming them into his glory. They've finished the race. Yep. Uh, He's like, come in. It's a beautiful thing to see a believer pass on into the joy of the Lord. There's nothing like seeing that. It's Mm. just the most amazing thing to me. The fact that you could have Paul say to depart and be with the Lord is much better. And whenever someone is confronted with staying or leaving, leaving is like, yeah, leaving's better. We've talked before, honey, about my funeral, if and when that ever happens beforehand, before the Lord takes you, that I want it to be a celebration of the gospel and to celebrate because you know what? Yes, there'll be mourning, but the fact is a believer, when they see another believer leave, while we miss them and we mourn temporarily, we know that where that individual has gone to is so far better. And then one day, when they put on that immortal body, that glorified body, and they are forever in the presence of God. Friends, that's why you have to Remember, each and every day, we're not of this world. We're in it, but we're not of it. Our journey is going home. Our home is not this earth. Our home is heaven. Our home is to be in the presence of Christ. And we have to daily, if not hour by hour, preach it to ourselves and preach it to one another because we have to always keep in sight that this world is trying to drag you down, trying to keep you trying to silence you, and everything that God tells us in his word is this. One day, those who eagerly await me, those who seek me, will be with me, and it will be better than when Adam first walked on this earth. It will be in such an amazing paradise, new heaven, a new earth, where there's no need of the sun, the moon, the stars, for God will be with his people. We will be in the presence of our Lord Jesus forever and ever. That is the culmination of our first two seasons. Now, we get ready to take a break. And as we mentioned, Holly and I are taking uh, the month of December off, A, because it's been roughly eight months continually straight working. And two, we need to spend some time getting things ready for season three. And I can only tell you that season three is like Romans chapter 12. 
Romans 1 through 11, theology, foundation, doctrine. Romans chapter 12 is about now that you have that foundation, how should you live? How does this actually work out? Season three is, in my opinion, right now, as Holly and I have prayed and talked and sought the Lord, man, season three is, well, I, I, a little bit gritty. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I mean, I have such a joy about it, but man, I, at the same time, man, you guys are either going to love us or hate us or a little bit of both because what the Lord has put upon us and and put on the docket coming up. Friends, this is not for the faint of heart. And what I mean by that is you got to have a mirror. You better have a mirror. I, I think one of the best ways to, to do it is um, why don't you give them a, a, just a little teaser, a little taste. Hey, y'all. Join us beginning January 3rd for a brand new season called Waking the Sleeping Giant. Do you feel like you're ill-prepared to go into society today with all the questions and topics bombarding you that you can't bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to this lost and dying world without perhaps bringing shame on the name of Christ? Well, this season, we're bringing those topics to the forefront, dealing with them, and helping you to overcome. Through the month of December, be on the lookout because we are going to have a lot of little teasers coming out, kind of giving you a little bit more tidbits on what to expect. This kind of gives you a little highlight. But I know that when we were we were asking the Lord and guiding and we were talking about and writing down different subjects, every single one of them that are up there is not only relevant for today, relevant for what's going on, it is something that I guarantee you you are going to encounter. There is no escape from it. I, I And I mean, I don't want to go into more detail on that, but every single topic that we're, we're addressing this coming season is what you're facing daily, and you're having to make decisions on how you engage it. It is perhaps one of the most joyous seasons that we're going to be encountering, and it's also going to be one of the most difficult because it's making us also look at ourselves and examining what it means to be the church and is the giant in you awakening. Season three is just around the corner. Thanks for joining us on this week's broadcast. If you'd like to hear us speak on a certain topic, please visit us on our website at thatthemayallbeone.org and click on the contact page. We'd love to hear what's important to you in your current walk with Christ. If you're on Facebook, give us a follow at TTMA. BO Podcast. That's the acronym for That They May All Be One Podcast. Or you can click on the link on our website. Please make sure and share with others if this podcast has been a blessing to you. Also, don't forget to rate us on your podcast app and hit that subscribe button. Thanks again for listening. And remember, always line up your thinking with the straight edge of Scripture.